Not many things make sense in the universe, but one thing that makes complete sense is that Tim Allen is actually an ancestral hominid. Evidence shows that he could be hiding an opposable big toe, the likes of our earliest ancestor, Artipithecus ramidus. The most likely explanation for his existence today is that extraterrestrials picked him up 4.4 million years ago for extensive preservation and research, and dropped him back off in Denver, Colorado, in his supposed birth year of 1953, just six years and 500 miles away from Roswell, New Mexico. The best way to give proof to this theory is to go through the hominid lineage and examine the obvious comparisons to Tim Allen's physical structure to that of other ancestral hominids. Let us begin from the beginning. Artipithecus ramidus walked the earth 4.4 million years ago in eastern Africa in the middle Arwash and Ghana, Ethiopia regions. Artipithecus had a cranial capacity between 350 and 300 cubic centimeters, much like the cranial capacity of Tim Allen, as there's probably not that much in there. He had an omnivorous diet, eating primary plants, meat, and fruit. A, ob a diet that's very similar to Tim Allen, who eats those things too. Artipithecus ramidus was originally found in 1994, but required more fossil evidence before it could be classified as a species. After 15 years of reconstruction of over thousands of specimens, they were able to finally Christian Artipithecus ramidus in the year 2009. Some distinguishing features of Artipithecus ramidus that uh, he has a large toe that shows that he was bipedal but still had an opposable big toe for both ar arboreal and ground walking. An elongated pelvis also showed that Artie could walk without lumbering like around like a chimpanzee, and he had a wrist that showed ver flexible finger bones, a rigidity of the other primates that use it in climbing. Artipithecus walked around the woodlands, as I'm sure Tim Allen once did as well. Some other facts about Artipithecus ramidus is that she is the oldest of our human ancestors found so far, and expresses the first spouts of bipedalism. The sex for food hypothesis is one that's strong regarding Artipithecus, due to the fact that, uh, that Artipithecus were one of the first food foragers. They found food, picked it up with their hands, and could walk long distances back to their base. Another relevant species to the Tim Allen conspiracy theory uh, is Australopithecus animensis who ranged from 4.2 million years ago to 3.9 million years ago, and the East Africa, Lake Turkana, Middle Arwash regions. He had a cranial capacity that was relatively small, but not big enough for fossil evidence to get an exact size for, but he ate plants, ranging everywhere from fruit to nuts. In 1965, Artipithecus animensis was found with a singular arm bone, and needed more evidence to classify it as a species. Meave Leakey returned to Kenya to find more specimens, and in 1995, Artipithecus animensis was finally classified. Distinguishing features of Australopithecus animensis include significant sexual dimorph, large canines, include large canine teeth that show up for use of display and aggression that are still prevalent, and long forearms and wrist bone that imply an arboreal lifestyle, but the tibia shows evidence of bipedalism. Some other things about Australopithecus animensis also uh, expressed its significant sexual dimorphism and was about the size of a modern chimpanzee. It had bigger toothed enamel than its previous ancestors and relatively large and pointed canines than its earlier ancestors. I would say the area around woodlands and lake areas. This was followed by Australopithecus afarensis, who existed between 3.85 to 2.95 million years ago. He, was, he could be found in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania with a cranial capacity of 500 cubic centimeters. His diet consisted of leaves, fruit, seeds, small insects, small vertebrates, and roots. Uh, the first most important discovery regarding our Australopithecus afarensis is Lucy, which was a scientist's first visible example of bipedalism. He had human-like Y5 premolars as well, with a flat nose, a flat nose, a strongly projecting lower jaw, a canine diastema, and a prominent brow ridge, and a sagittal crest on top of his skull for his jaw muscles. One way we can compare this to Tim Allen is that to show his manly displays, it is very likely that Tim Allen still hones his canines much more to display his masculinity. Australopithecus afarensis uh, existed in a habitat in the savanna, sparse woodland, and dense forest. This was the beginning of a long gestation period, but still with um, rapid growth after birth. Australopithecus africanus uh, existed between 3.3 to 2.1 million years ago in the geographic area of South Africa with a cranial capacity of 480 cubic centimeters. He possibly ate some meat but from scavenging, but primarily just ate fruits and leaves. One of the earliest discoveries was by Raymond Dart, who found the skull of a juvenile, which had small cranial capacity and a form of magnum beneath the skull. This came to be known as the Tom child. Robert Broom also found a spine with six vertebrae, known as Miss Plez, found in 1947, which was originally believed to be a plesianthropus, but was later discovered to be an Australopithecus, and there is still confusion about whether the skull is male or female. Tim Allen once brought up South Africa in a conversation at some point, and as a result there's a pretty good chance that the aliens did induct him from South Africa 
unlike his Wikipedia paged home of Denver, Colorado, supposedly. Other things about Australopithecus africanus include that there are assumptions that they use sticks and tools in some rocks. However, the rocks were probably not shaped. Paranthus uh existed between 2.7 and 2.3 million years ago in the geographic region of Eastern Africa. Um, he had a cranial capacity of 420 cubic centimeters and a vegetarian diet. One of the most important discoveries were the black skull found in 1985 by Alan Walker, which proves that he has a significant more protruding face than many other Paranthropus species. Distinguishing features about Paranthropus aethiopicus is that it is the largest of all the Paranthropus species and exhibited strong sexual dimorphism. Males also had a sagittal crest. Tim Allen could be hiding a sagittal crest under his full head of hair for all we know. Paranthropus aethiopicus also lived in the savanna grasslands and woodlands. Paranthropus aethiopicus is also known as Paranthropus walkeri in honor of Alan Walker, who found the black skull. And Allen also rhymes with Allen with an E, like Tim Allen. Paranthropus boise existed between 2.5 to 1.2 million years ago in Kenya and Tanzania. He had a cranial capacity of 450 cubic centimeters, a, a diet mostly consisting of seeds, nuts, roots, and USOs. The Zenji school was found by Mary Leakley in 1959 in Old Gorge in Tanzania. The school found in, in 1970 was by Richard Leakey in the Kubai Fora in East Turkana, Kenya. Some distinguishing features about Paranthropus boise include this, his strong sagittal crest and the thickest tooth enam enamel of any known early human, including cheek teeth four times that size of the humans. Paranthropus boise existed in open savanna grasslands and woodlands. He's also nicknamed the Nutcracker name for his giant teeth, All, also like Tim Allen, who has some really giant teeth. Paranthropus robustus existed between 1.8 to 1.2 million years ago in the region of South Africa with a cranial capacity of 520 cubic centimeters. He ate a diet of tougher foods than other ancestors, nuts, seeds, and USOs, which rhymes with UFOs, which are what abducted Tim Allen. Important fossils include the 1938 Robert Broom uh, fossil fragment in Kromjari, South, South Africa, and some distinguishing features include big molars and thick tooth enamel. It includes large zygomatic arches and a sagittal crest, and the species lived in a combination of dry savanna grasslands and some woodlands. There's a possibility that animal bones were used as tools to dig for termites in the mounds. Homo habilis existed between 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago in the re region of eastern and southern Africa, with a cranial capacity of 610 cubic centimeters and completely ate vegetables. Some important fossils found of, of this species were in 1986 by Tim White in Tanzania, a female specimen that proved Homo habilis to be more ape-like due to its having longer arms and shorter legs. Johnny's child was found by Jonathan Leakey in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania in 1960. A young male skeleton made the type specimen or official representation of the species. Some distinguishing features of the of the habilis include reduced facial features compared with the previous species, smaller canines and generally smaller teeth, but still relatively large incisors. Curved finger bones suggest that they had human-like grip, and they existed in the grassland. Some other things are that it was known as handyman because of what appeared to be the remains of stone tools were found nearby in the fossil site. Use of Aldowan stone tools. This can relate to Tim Allen because of his time as a handyman on the show, Home Improvement, which shows his mildly successful display at working with tools, proving that he may have also been an early ancestral hominid. Homo erectus existed between 1.89 million years ago to 143,000 years ago. Northern, eastern, and southern parts of Africa and Western East Asia areas. He had a cranial capacity of 1,050 cubic centimeters and meat supplemented with plants, possibly honey, and some USOs as well. Important fossil discoveries include those by Eugene Du Bois in 1891, also known as Java Man, named Erectus because of its qualities of being able to stand upright. Tim Allen also had a coffee obsession, which relates to Java Man because Java means coffee in some contexts. Distinguishing features include a low sloping forehead, similar to Tim Allen's and similar to the size of modern humans but with thicker bones. The skull also has sharp edges. Homo erectus had a cold, glacier-filled existence in China, but it lived in warmer climates in Java, the site of Du Bois's Java Man. Sometimes considered to be the same species as Homo ergaster, it's also associated with the first hand axe ever created. Evidence from burnt bones and charcoal specimens show that Homo erectus was possibly the first species to use fire. Neanderthals walked through the earth between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago. They could be found anywhere between Europe and Central Asia, with a cranial capacity of 1,500 cubic centimeters, and consisting of a diet of meat, 
big game, fish, and other plants. Important fossil finds with Neanderthals include Neanderthal 1, which was found in the Neander Valley of Germany in 1856. Pairing Neanderthal 1 with other fossils that were found 30 years earlier, it was discovered that these fossils were Neanderthals as well. Some distinguishing features of Neanderthals include that they have a larger nose and brain case than modern humans, which relates directly to Tim Allen because he has a massive nose. Also, they have a shorter and stockier body mass to deal with the cold. These species also lived in cold environments since there was a global climate change, and these were the first species to partake in symbolic actions, wear clothes, and things such as this. Homo sapiens are the species of today, ranging from 200,000 years ago to right now. Homo early Homo sapiens spot fossils could be found in China, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, and they have a cranial capacity of 1,350 cubic centimeters. They have an omnivorous diet and eat domesticated plants and animals. Important fossil finds include Liadrung, a skull discovered in 1958 in China that doesn't carry many of the features of other skulls of that period, and suggests that different features did not appear until significantly later. 17 skeletons were found at a work site in Oregon, France, which are shown to be 10,000 years old. The Cro-Magnon was a skull found in France in 1868 that proved to be 32,000 years old. Another fossil called Olmo was found to be 195,000 years old in Ethiopia and that displays a larger brain case. Some distinguishing features of Homo sapiens include long limbs and skinny in warmer climates, and shorter and, stock, shorter and stockier in colder climates to accommodate weather patterns. They have a smaller face and a projecting nose bone, and a limited brow ridge and square orbits. The species live, occupy almost every part of the planet. And also earlier, Homo sapiens had a larger brain case than modern humans by 150 cubic centimeters. Tim Allen is so different from many other modern humans and shares so many traits with earlier ancestors that it's difficult to compare him to anything like but ancestral hominids. Based on this evidence, I hope the world can now know the truth, however disturbing it may be. From his hidden opposable big toes to his manly grunt, the evidence of Tim Allen being a previously unknown ancestral hominid matches up with the evidence. <laughs> yeah.